Hi, in this video I want to quickly talk about Fourier analysis in SciPy and uh, yeah, what a Fourier transform is um, just very quickly. So a Fourier transform is an algorithm or is a method of extracting um, frequencies in a certain signal. So the theory behind that is that every signal can be represented as a sum of sinusoid functions and these sinusoids have uh, of course a different phase so they're shifted on the x-axis and they have a different amplitude um, meaning that they are yeah, taller or less tall have uh, go from minus 1 to 1 um, or from minus 10 to 10 so like have different ranges on the y-axis and um, yeah we're able to convert every signal that we could have um, into this represent, uh, representation of sinusoid functions, there, which are added up basically. And these sinusoids all have different frequency, frequencies. Um, so yeah, we basically have this range of sinusoids which we can use to add up and um, basically scale in order to reconstruct the original signal. And um, yeah, there's a function or this, there's this uh, formula for doing exactly that. And it's called the Fourier transform. And um, in our case, we will use the discrete Fourier transform, which works for discrete data, since um, usually in computer science we use discrete data instead of continuous data, because computers are just able to store discrete data much easier than continuous values. And um, yeah, you can see the formula for that here, but um, yeah, you don't really have to understand what this formula does exactly. Um, it's just important to know that this extracts frequencies from our original signal and basically saves um, in an array how strong these frequencies contribute to our original signal. And the nice thing is that um, the array of frequencies or the uh, array of amplitudes for these frequencies which we can extract using the Fourier transform um, has exactly the same length as our original signal. And this is true for every signal there is and this is um, proven by mathematics that we can um, represent every signal with an equal amount of values uh, of frequencies. So yeah, this is just a fact basically because it's proven and this is very nice because we can just convert an array um, which contains our signal into another array of the same size which then um, yeah, contains the amplitudes for different frequencies which make up the original signal. Okay, so um, yeah, you might, think, you might ask yourself now why is this important, why is this nice? Um, but this actually has lots of applications and it really is um, an amazing method of yeah, analyzing the data or processing data and there are lots of different uh, applications of this Fourier transform. Um, I list some of them here. Um, for example, that can be used for compression. The JPEG image format actually uses um, an algorithm very very similar to the Fourier transform to store images um, in a compressed way. Um, yeah, it is used to extract frequency bands, for example, from EEG signals. Uh, it can be used to efficiently do convolution, for example, in convolutional neural networks or in just normal image processing and computer vision. And uh, yeah, it is used to analyze audio data. Um, the spectrogram you saw earlier also uses Fourier transforms in the background. So it um, basically divides the whole audio signal into different chunks and then computes the Fourier transform on, on each of these chunks and then basically puts each of these Fourier transforms um, yeah, together as, as an image. And um, yeah, by that it computes the amplitudes of frequencies for each time frame, basically. 
and this gives us the spectrogram which captures the frequencies over time. Um, yeah, so there are lots of applications for the Fourier transform and I just want to quickly show you um, one example of doing um, a fast, fast Fourier transform in SciPy. And uh, yeah, a fast Fourier transform, which is what this FFD stands for, is just um, yeah, a, a variation of the normal Fourier transform uh, formula, uh, which just makes it faster, so easier to compute um, using conventional computers, but it doesn't change the outcome. So it's just uh, speed up without changing um, anything that we get in the end. So this is really nice. And uh, it's also mathematically proven that the fast Fourier transform um, does exactly the same as the normal Fourier transform, just more efficient. All right, so I prepared this cell here um, where we have these two plots. And the left plot just shows a sine, a sine wave. And uh, this is the signal we want to analyze. And on the right side, we have the Fourier transform. And um, yeah, here we are using the absolute value of the Fourier transform. And we have to use the absolute value here because the Fourier, Fourier transform actually, um, yeah, well, the result of the Fourier, Fourier transform actually contains complex numbers. And uh, we can't plot complex numbers uh, easily in such a plot here. So we just take the absolute value, which basically gives us the amplitude of this frequency. And um, yeah, the, the complex number is needed because um, the Fourier transform has to encode the amplitude for each frequency and also the phase. So these are two different values which are then encoded into this, um, yeah, this complex number. And uh, yeah, you don't have to understand the math behind that, but um, just know that the result of a Fourier transform is a complex array. Okay, and you can also already notice that we have these two peaks here, and this is because the Fourier transform is basically uh, contains basically um, itself twice. So the left part here. It's just the same as this right part, but mirrored. And now I have added the sliders here, or the slider. And with that, we can change the frequency of our signal here. So if we change this, um, we have a higher frequency, so more oscillations in this time frame. And you can also see that these uh, peaks now moved in the Fourier transform. And in the beginning, when the frequency was set to 1, they were just very close to the zero here, and they actually are at one. So the x-axis represents the frequency, and um, yeah, they are at one because this sine wave has the frequency of one. And if we now increase this, you can see that they move, and now we're at frequency at a frequency of 12.3, and these peaks are at the frequency 12.3, and this was extracted from just this data. So this is what the Fourier transform does. It's able to um, yeah, extract the signal uh, or the, the frequency, the strength of each frequency in such a signal. And yeah, we can just move the slider around to see different frequencies and we can see the Fourier transform move as well. And um, yeah, as you might notice here already, we now have these weird artifacts in our original signal uh, if we set the frequency really high. And this is not actually how the signal looks. Um, we basically would have just all of the values between oscillated between minus 1 and 1. But we get this weird um, yeah, lower frequency um, projected onto our data because of a, of a low sampling rate. So. Um, yeah, we only have 250 samples in our array and 250 samples are not enough to capture um, yeah, all of these oscillations. And uh, this gives us these weird artifacts, which I believe are called Moiré um, artifacts. And uh, yeah, this is not 
how the actual signal looks. This is just an effect of having a low number of samples and a very high frequency. Okay, and then additionally I also have these three checkboxes here and these allow me to add different sine waves on top of this. So if I add for example the sine wave 2 here, which has a lower amplitude, uh, a lower frequency, frequency, we can now see that um, yeah, we have this um, low frequency in here and then the higher frequency um, from our original sine wave and I can still change the one that we had before. So if I change this you can see that um, now it's a little bit more clear how the sine wave 2, so the second one here, looks. It's just this um, yeah, slow frequency one um, which has a like this long face. And then um, added to that is our second sine wave uh, with a higher frequency. And you can already see in the Fourier transform that we now have multiple peaks here. And this is because uh, the Fourier transform um, yeah, extracted the multiple frequencies from our data here. And um, I can still move this around and this only moves this uh, second peak here. And um, yeah, this part close to zero here now corresponds to our uh, sine wave 2, which has a very low frequency. Okay, so yeah, if I just, as another example, at this other one here, uh, you can see that now we have different, a different sine wave again. Um, yeah, again, a quite low frequency and then a higher frequency added to that. And we can have this low frequency, uh, which is shown in the, uh, close to this um, yeah, zero mark here, and then a higher frequency at about 25. Okay, but how did this work? How was this done? Um, this was done using this FFT function. And this FFT function, which stands for Fast Fourier Transform, as I already said, comes from this FFT submodule. And all you have to provide to this function is an array of your signal. And in this case, this is called ys, so our ys, which just uh, contains the y values for our signal here. And I got this using just a normal sine function and multiplied by the frequency. And then in, this, um, in these if statements here, I just add um, the different frequencies depending on if the yeah, the sine 1, sine 2, and sine 3 checkboxes were checked. And these are just some hard-coded frequencies that can be added to our sine wave. Okay, now what this function returns is just a complex array of the same size of y's. And as I said, this complex array then includes uh, the amplitude and phase for each of the sinusoids that make up the signal um, containing y's. And we can just use this Fourier um, array directly to plot this. And this is what I did here, um, x to the plot. Um, I used the absolute value of this Fourier array, but I also set the x values for this. And the x values come from this uh, FFT frig function. And um, if I don't include this, uh, I can just show you. Um, then we get just yeah the peaks organized differently and now the x-axis doesn't really make sense anymore because we have this basically copy of the data um, once on the left one on uh, once on the right these frequencies don't make any, uh, sense anymore so uh, the fft frag function here uh, returns an array basically the frequencies corresponding to our um, amplitudes that we got from the FFT function. And if we just use these frequencies as X values, then we get this like true representation of our frequency amplitudes, um, which makes a little bit more sense now. And uh, even though these negative frequencies might seem a bit weird, uh, this is just how the Fourier transform works. Um, yeah, it just includes these frequencies twice. Um, in each, um, yeah, in each result. And um, what you have to specify for this FFT frag function 
is first of all the length of your signal and this is already enough to um, yeah, to generate frequencies and then um, I also set um, the sampling rate here and I just set this to 1 over 2 times pi divided by the maximum in our x values times the length of the y values and this might seem a bit arbitrary now but uh, what this does is just set the sampling rate such that um, yeah, a normal sine wave um, with a, a period of 2 pi which is just a normal sine wave will get the frequency 1 and um, yeah, basically a sine wave with a period twice of that so a period with um, of, of 4 pi will then have the frequency 0 0.5 and so on so that we have like a nice mapping of uh, frequencies to our uh, periods okay and this is all I wanted to show you um, about the Fourier transform in SciPy and um, yeah by the way NumPy also has a FFT submodule for the fast Fourier transform um, but the SciPy's FFT submodule actually includes some more variations uh, of this function and uh, yeah but you can use both of course um, the results are obviously the same